Hey there guys, so Avermedia sent me their new Live Gamer Ultra S capture card. And I was pretty excited about this because I have been using the original version, the Live Gamer Ultra, for about four or five years now at this point. It is probably my most used tech device by a pretty significant margin. I think my PC, my mouse and keyboard and monitors are the things that get the most use and then it's this. And while the new version here comes with some pretty major upgrades, at least for me, one of the big upgrades is the fact that with the new version, you're able to record all the way up to 4K 60, 1440p 144 hertz or 1080p at 240 hertz and well what i want to do today is i want to see what is the bare minimum computer that you can use to record at 144 hertz i would try out all the way up to 240 if i had a 240 hertz monitor that still worked i had an hyper x i believe it was armada 25 i got it from micro center and within six months of owning it it just died on me but i do have a 1440p 144 hertz display that i can use and my main monitor is a ultra wide 1440p 144 hertz display so i might test that one out but the two systems that i am going to be using today is going to be the b-link s13 mini that is rocking the intel n150 we recently took a look at this system and well we're gonna test it out along with the last system that i compared it with and that is the boss game p5 that is rocking the ryzen 5 6600h and if this can't do the job we'll move up to the ryzen 9 6950h but let's see how these perform so obviously the first system that i'm taking a look at with this specific capture card is the b-link s13 mini and this is the one that i am the most worried about because it's so far below what the minimum specs of this capture card require the system requirements do say that they recommend a desktop with an i5 from the 6000 generation or a Ryzen 3 from practically any generation or a laptop i7-7700 HQ. In other words, the N150 is just below the requirements for the CPU. So I was very curious to see how it would end up performing. And well, I hopped into Combat Master just to play a game that gets ridiculously high FPS. And so trying to capture this with the B-Link ended up only working up to 1440p 60 FPS. If I tried to do 120 or 144, I just was not able to do that in the slightest. It became an absolute stuttery frozen mess that it was unwatchable. So this is as good as it gets. And this should be more than adequate for pretty much anybody, but if you want the high refresh rate capture, you're not going to be able to do that. And you'll see that if we slowed down the gameplay to about 20% speed, which would be roughly around 30 FPS if you were at 144 hertz, you can see that this is definitely not running at high refresh rate. You can see that it is practically a slideshow. While it's certainly usable if this is the only option that you have, and you might notice the screen it's because the display that I have can only do 144 hertz at 1440p with variable refresh rate off. It's kind of an older display, so unfortunately it can't do variable refresh rate and 144 hertz at 1440p. But that's perfectly fine for the purposes of this video here. But you can see that at 60 hertz here, you are a lot more limited in terms of what you can do for slow mo. The lowest that you'll be able to comfortably drop things down to is about 50% game speed, where here here you can see it looks significantly smoother there's a lot more detail because it's essentially not skipping over any frames it's simply playing 60 fps at 30 so you're seeing every single frame essentially just at half speed. This is the most ideal for 60 FPS and it can still make gameplay more interesting, but you can definitely see the massive difference in the slowdown. So it's no surprise that the Mini S13 wasn't able to handle 120 or 144 FPS. So I ended up hooking up the Boss Game P5 since the 
Mini S13 just was not capable of doing this. This is one tier above in terms of the mini PC market. So an extra $100 and well, let's see if that can make a difference when it comes to trying to record anything. And here is where we saw a massive difference in how this performed. Here I was able to capture Combat Master running at 144 FPS with absolutely no problems. So while on the B-Link, the GPU was completely overloaded and even the CPU was at 50 to 60% utilization at all times. In this scenario, the boss game P5 was just not breaking a sweat at all. The peak CPU utilization was about 10% and the hardware encoder was handling this perfectly fine on that little iGPU. So at no point was the system in any way overwhelmed. And if we slow down the gameplay to 20%, like we did with the footage off of the B-Link that was only 60 FPS, you can see there is far more detail in all of the movements here. There's still, of course, the screen tearing, but that just comes down to my personal setup. If I had a newer display that could do 144 or 240 hertz while also having variable refresh rate, this would look even better. But you can see every single detail in the movements that I do. There's really no skipping around or anything like that because it doesn't have to essentially fill in any gaps with frames that have just been on the screen for too long. That's usually what happens with 60 FPS that you try to slow down too much. The frames just hold on the screen for longer and it ends up giving you that slideshow effect. Here, every Everything is significantly smoother. The only thing that's taking away from it is that screen tearing, but if you have a newer display, then that won't even be an issue. I can also capture gameplay with variable refresh rate on at 100 FPS, which would still be an improvement. And of course, because it's 144 hertz, it's kind of an awkward number. It's not exactly perfect. If you're looking to capture gameplay like this, I would recommend that you do 120 because 120 very easily divides into 30 FPS, while 144 is just not perfect like that. And personally, I don't think that the increase in FPS is worth it versus just using 120. So personally, I think the improvements that they've done with the new Live Gamer Ultra S are pretty incredible. For me personally, I think that replacing the fan with passive cooling, being a more efficient unit that in general doesn't get as hot, and having more capabilities makes it a worthwhile upgrade. And the fact that we're able to utilize high refresh rate recording with such a low budget system like the Boss Game P5 here, that's pretty much a win in my book because you can have a dual streaming or recording setup without really needing to spend a whole lot of time, a whole lot of money, money and it doesn't take up a lot of space. So after testing both of these systems, what is the conclusion here? Well, it's very clear that the Mini S13 cannot do 120 FPS video. It can't do 144 Hertz, and I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be able to do 240. It's just not a powerful enough system to do that. What you can do though, is you can record at 1440p, 60 FPS, no problem, and I can almost guarantee you that 4K is gonna perform exactly the same. It's really those high frame rates that this is not able to do. And that's not necessarily a deal breaker because if you're just looking for a secondary PC for streaming, something that is just going to be in charge of the streaming and nothing else, the quick sync on this is going to be able to handle a 1080p 60 FPS stream, no problem. And that's even if you have the bandwidth for that. For a lot of people, you might be stuck using 720p 60 and this is gonna handle that no problem at all. But you also realistically wouldn't be looking at a capture card like these. And by the way, the old one is still available, but the upgrades on the new one are just so nice in comparison, especially the fact that I no longer have to deal with the fan that's in here. That's a huge lifesaver. The fan is very annoying. It collects so much dust. I have to essentially clean this thing out every few months. The fact that I no longer need to worry about that, the fact that this runs so much cooler and it performs better, it's just one of those things where it's an all around upgrade that is worth it. Although the truth of the matter is I probably would not have bought this myself. I would have kept using this thing until it dies. And so far it has been working perfectly fine. So I trust this thing to hold up because I've had the experience with this one. I'm telling you, I've been using this thing every day for four years. I was using this thing before I even started this channel. I was using this for another channel and it's still going strong. And for most content that you're gonna do, 1440p 60 is still perfectly fine.
not. 4K 30, depending on what you're doing, if you're trying to essentially use a capture card for a camera, you might want to be able to get 4K out of it. But if you're just doing content on the internet, the vast majority of people are watching on 1080p screens or at most 1440p screens that are on their phones. So you don't need to get crazy, but the high refresh rate capture of this can be very useful. It all comes down to the type of content that you're trying to do. But the Mini S13 really is just better paired with the old one where at most you're going to get 1440p 60 and this is going to handle it perfectly fine. But this new one, this more powerful one and the one that has better flexibility, the minimum that you should go with is something like the Boss Game P5. The 6600H handled recording at 120 at 144 hertz and I can pretty much guarantee you it's going to handle 240 hertz no problem because it was not breaking a sweat at all while capturing that so that means that you can have a streaming package right here where you have the capture card you have the streaming device you're going to be able to control your chat your overlays everything like that on here and your desktop can just be completely dedicated towards gaming and it's great especially if you're the type of person that plays a lot of indie survival games i know a lot of those end up becoming popular out of nowhere and one of the problems with games like that is that it can lead to your system crashing because they're so unstable. And sure, a system crash is pretty annoying on a day-to-day -day basis in general, but when you're streaming and that computer is the only device that you have, when it goes down, your stream goes down. It's over. Now, if you want to restart your stream, it's going to have to send a new notification to people. Any people that saw your stream crash are going to end up leaving. It can become a hassle, and that's what something like this can really mitigate for a very low price. Because we're not talking about you building a whole brand new tower or anything like that. It's buying a $280 mini PC and a capture card for less than $200. And you now have a whole system that is going to let you stream. It's going to let you record. For streaming, I really do recommend one of the smaller capture cards that they have because you don't need the high refresh rate. But if you're recording gameplay, if you're doing montages, or you just want to spice up your gameplay in any kind of way, slow-mo can be very useful useful and it, this is a great way to do it. You know, yes, the file sizes are bigger, but in all honesty, you don't need to be making an insane amount of money off of making content before you buy a NAS. You can get a very decent NAS setup for less than $300 and it can be one that you build off of and it's just better to store your footage like that because of the fact that you have more to work with. The higher the bit rate, the higher the FPS, anything like that, the better because you get more flexibility ability later down the line and sure it's content that's going to end up on youtube so you don't need to go crazy with it but being able to just throw in slow-mo i'm telling you will be able to change the way that people look at clips that you've already gotten it gives you more flexibility in the editing and it gives you more longevity to the content that you're making and if you're really serious about your gaming it's a great way of you being able to frame by frame judge how your aim is working can't really do that with 60 hertz video Video because if you slow it down too much, it's just a slideshow. You're not really seeing any extra detail. With this, if you're at 1080p and you can get 240 hertz recorded, that's a lot of information that you have to work with so you can really hone in on what's going on with your aim. And look, I've seen the aim training subreddit. I don't want to make some of you guys more neurotic than you already are, but I'm saying if you really care that much, you can do frame by frame analysis of your own aim with something like this be warned it might consume your life but i'm gonna leave a link down to this setup down below as well as this one though i'm probably going to recommend a cheaper capture card than this because this setup really benefits more from lower resolutions and not very high fps although 1440p is becoming a lot more popular as a resolution that people game at so being able to at least do 1440p 60 is pretty rock solid but if you want to take it to the next level this is it you don't need to get crazy with it but anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.